Good morning, friends. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I am the pastor at Glencoe United Methodist Church, and I am glad that you're here joining us for our final daily devotional for this week. Friends, this week has gone by so fast. It feels like just yesterday was the beginning of the week, and now here we are at Friday. I'm glad that you're here. And I hope that you are doing well during this time, and I hope that you are able to continue to serve God in different ways in your life, no matter what that looks like, no matter how God is putting on your heart to serve, you are making ways, finding ways to serve God, no matter how simple it may seem, no matter how difficult it may seem, I hope and pray that you are fulfilling the call. I also wanted to say this day that our Bible study is going to come to a close next week because we've already went through our book with our sessions, and it's been a good time. We have learned a lot. We have talked about some very important things, and we will have another Bible study coming up soon in a few weeks after this one ends. If you are interested in doing a Bible study with us and you have ideas as to what you would like to do, please shoot me an email at the email below and let me know what kind of Bible study you want to do. I'm all about trying to meet the needs of my people and if you want to do something in particular, you may not be the only one. So if you let me know, I'll see what I can do to try to bring that out next time. If not next time, then maybe the time after. So please let me know about what you would like to do, and I will let you know soon what we are going to be doing after this Bible study ends. But we will be doing another one, and I am excited to be doing that. Also, I want us to remember that no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, do not forget to take time each and every day to pray. Pray for this community, pray for this country, and pray for the world. Pray that the kingdom of God will continue to flourish. Pray that we will continue to move towards love rather than hate. No matter what is going on in the world, pray that love will always conquer hate because sometimes it just feels as if that is not going to be the case. And I don't know about you, but prayer definitely makes me feel better because then I know that God is hearing what I have to say, that God is hearing my concerns, and hopefully we can see Together, change in this world where God is moving us to change, moving us to grow, and moving us to do things anew. So that way, this world can be transformed through His grace and His mercy and love. Let us now dive into Scripture this day, which comes from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Hear now the Word of God. Therefore, Brothers and sisters, holy partners in a heavenly calling, consider that Jesus, the apostle and the high priest of our confession, was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house, yet Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself, for every house is built by someone but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that would be spoken later. Christ, however, was faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house if we hold firm the confidence and the pride that belong to hope. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is important for us to remember each and every day that God is the builder and that we are his creation. When we think about this scripture, we think about how Moses was part of the plan, not the plan itself. God had Jesus 
the one who came and looked over the house that is being built by God. And with Jesus overseeing everything, we can have faith and hope in what the house will look like. When you think about building a new home, when you think about creating a new space, you try to build it in a way that is conducive to what you are wanting it to be. In other words, if you're making a living room, you're not going to make it feel like a kitchen or a bathroom or a bedroom. If you are building a church, you're not going to make it feel like a Starbucks or like a Walmart. Instead, you are going to have it feel a certain way. You are going to give it a certain understanding. It's got to have purpose. As oftentimes I put things, it has to have heart. Heart. Here's the thing, friends. When we consider what all is going on in the world, we have to think about what all is needed of us. If God has created a house out of us, then what are we doing with this house? Are we being a prison or are we being a home? Are we being a place to sell things or are we being a home? Are we being a restaurant or are we being a home? Are we being a sports entertainment center or are we going to be a home? I keep saying home over and over and over. Let me tell you what I mean by home. Homes are filled with comfort and joy, memories and love, kindness and compassion, opportunities for coming together and being united, opportunities for conversations to take place in a safe and loving manner. All of these things are what I'm considering. We don't consider it a prison and hold people there against their will. We don't hold them hostage. Instead, we let them come and go as they please. We do not make this a place of selling services or goods. We offer things that we believe others need, but that does not mean that we force it upon them. What we do is we say, hey, would you like this? And then we leave it at that. Something that is filled with more love and attention rather than something that is more capitalistic. We're not focusing on the cell. We're focusing on the meaningfulness, on the care, on the core, the heart. We're not just a kitchen or a restaurant, but we do offer food when needed. If someone is hungry, why not feed them? When someone needs clothes, why not clothe them? When someone needs some place to stay, why not invite them in? If we are the house that God has built, not a church, but if we as the people are the house that God has built, then we need to be doing the things that God would have us to do. We should show that love and compassion that Jesus showed the world, that God showed the world. And we need to continue to do that each and every day. I have friends who grew up, and how did their grandparents and parents spend time on the weekends with their family? They cooked. They invited all the family that they can to come in. They invited friends of family to come in and eat. They wanted them at the table to be a part of that family. It's a community. And a minute ago I said that we are not a church. I mean that as a building. We are the church. If God built the church, as in the church that is the people, not a steeple, then we need to think about who we are being and how we are being. Are we trying to be the people that would serve God faithfully in ways that is honoring to God? Or are we trying to be in ways 
that will not honor God, but instead show God that we are unfaithful, distrustful. We got to show love. God wants us to love everyone, including God. Jesus said, love God, then love your neighbor. That is what's most important. So how do we do that each and every day? We be a home, a place that is welcoming, a place that is loving, and a place that is always open for someone to come. The doors of this church are not physically open right now. But that doesn't mean that the church is not open. The church never closes. The church has never closed because the church is greater than a building. You are the church. And everywhere you go, you represent the church. You represent God in all that you do. Everything that you say, everything that you hear, everything that you show, everything is representative of the church, which is God's people. God's house that God has built. God's home for all. Are you being hospitable? Are you welcoming everyone around you? Are you opening the doors to others? Or are you closing them? Are you allowing God to speak through you? Or are you not allowing God to speak at all? You can create barriers or you can open up windows and allow the sweet breeze that is the Holy Spirit to flow into this house and flow right back out to be in the world. It's a beautiful thing to think about us as a home because if we are all family, if we are all thinking about how to make a home filled with love, then we are truly thinking about what it means to be Christians. And it's as the hymn goes, they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. Go in peace this day, friends. Serve the Lord always, and don't forget to be a home to all. Thanks be to God. <laughs>